Hello, hello. Oh, Ultima, they can't see us yet. <laughs> but I think they can hear us. Or maybe they can. They have to refresh the stream. Oh, there we are. Well, there's me. Um, <laughs> hello, everybody. This is Fargast. Um, today is an exciting... Uh, oh, I am. Oops. Today is going to be an exciting uh, stream. We are going to be gabbing about Fire Emblem, and we have a special guest with us, Ultima Shadow X, who is a dear friend of mine. He is a uh, YouTube video editor. He's very active on Twitch and Twitter, um, and he's been a friend of mine, like I said, for a long time, and is also a big fan of the series, and especially Echoes. So, um, what's up, man? Hello, hi. I'm doing well. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, um, it says it's it says it's just me. Wait, hold on. Oh, good, oh, good. Oh, sorry, the stream's not updating yet. My bad. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry, Ultimate, go ahead. Hello, hi. Yes, I'm, like I guess I'm very excited to be here. Um, I'm. Uh, I love. I love talking. I, I just love talking. I love talking, especially about Fire Emblem. So I'm gonna have a lot of fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun for sure. Great, man. Uh, so um, I have a series of questions for you to kind of start things off. And the first thing is, well, I kind of spoiled it, and it was your favorite Fire Emblem game. Uh, or sorry, rather your history with Fire Emblem. We know that Fire, your favorite game. Yes, what, yes. what is your history with the series? I I think I actually, I mean, I think my 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 start is kind of similar to a lot of people's, but um, I don't know. I think my story will probably resonate with a lot of people because basically, uh, as with any child uh, who grew up with the GameCube, uh, you know, the first exposure to Fire Emblem was obviously Marth and Roy in Melee. Uh, and I think that that's a lot of people, you know, resonate with that. And so what happened was, I don't know when Brawl came out, um, you know, obviously we had Ike, uh, and I was very interested in all these characters around the same time was when the shadow dragons on DS came out. Um, I remember reading Nintendo power and seeing like, oh, they're, they're remaking the, the very first fire emblem on, on DS. And uh, I think these characters are really cool because I played Marth in both Melee and Brawl. Uh, so I saw in Nintendo Power, oh, they're remaking like the first game. It's Shadow Dragon to be on DS. It's going to be in English for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited. And I got Shadow Dragon. Uh-oh. <laughs> and I thought Shadow Dragon was awful. I genuinely thought it was terrible. I think I played like 
I played like five or six chapters and I just did not enjoy it at all. Yeah. And I didn't and I didn't touch Fire Emblem for a very long time until several years after Awakening came out. I don't remember which year it was specifically. It was before Fates, but um I got Fire Emblem Awakening because I had some friends tell me that it was really good, they really enjoyed it, it was really different. And so I gave it a shot again, like I tried the series again, and because of Awakening, I sort of fell back in love with the series. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, after, I played every mainline release after Awakening, and then I've been occasionally going back to play some of the older games. So I have played some of the pre-Awakening titles for sure, but not all of them. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically my history of Fire Emblem. I feel like a lot of people sort of uh, are the same way where they, it was because of Smash and then they yeah. really loved it because of Awakening. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It is actually really funny that you mentioned Shadow Dragon being like really bad because like I I felt very similar and I feel like <laughs> I feel like Shadow Dragon like wasn't meant to be played by the Western world. Like what I mean is is like when you because if you've ever played FE1, like the very first one, it was like so janky so archaic like nothing made any sense it was like a bad i don't think everyone was a good game like playing it back and like uh, like trying to be in the mindset of like a game from like the night like that early 90s when like other games of like came out around then and they were like just kind of just better like everyone just kind of sucked and so to be like someone who grew up with everyone and then playing Shadow Dragon with like all that context of what the game was originally, like I feel like those kind of people like really fucked with that with FE11. But then like out for us, like we've never played FE1, and then we're just playing this game that looks like it looks ugly as hell, and like we don't understand how like functionally good that game actually was. Uh, but yeah, I I also felt very similar like especially coming from like the gba where you're like oh man great story cool characters blah 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 and then fe and then and then fe 11 is just like it's fire emblem one like it's just straight up fire emblem one like marth is marth is a guy and like jagan is a guy and like the castle is gone and we have to fight and get the fire emblem so yeah i i felt i felt very similar my first time playing shadow dragon it was just like dude this game is this game's kind of bad. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe if I like, well, granted, I didn't I didn't play that. Um, I know they did that anniversary re-release. Uh, that was yeah. uh, the the localized one a few years ago. I didn't play that one, but yeah, I mean, it's interesting to think like I'm sure if I actually have sat down and played the original, I could appreciate Shadow Dragon. But like, I thought Shadow Dragon was gonna be a good entry point because it was like, oh, this is the first one of the series they're remaking. It's perfect. Uh, and and yeah, I just I didn't enjoy. It. I feel like I should probably give it a second chance yeah. now that I have more context on like older Fire Emblem titles, etc. But like back then, yeah, no, I just like, I did not like that game. And I'm very thankful, like, even though I, like I said, I, I appreciate the older games now, but I'm very thankful for Awakening, for rehooking in. I mean, oh, yeah. everyone knows, uh, you know, Awakening was how big of a deal that game was. But yeah, like, I don't know. I'm very thankful for Awakening. Like I, I know there's uh, a dichotomy of like, that's like the game that separates modern Fire Emblem from older Fire Emblem games. But like, I still think I, you know, I still appreciate it for, for what it did for bringing in so many people into the series for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The crazy thing, uh, is that I, I think if you did go back to FE1 and you would like, I mean, obviously you can't play the anniversary title anymore, which was the limited release thing was dumb, but like, yeah. Oh my God, what a weird thing they did. Like, it, okay. <laughs> I, it's weird because like, they th thought that it wouldn't like the reason why they did is because i guess they don't think it would sell even though it, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot like the reason they did it for mario as well they did it for the mario 3d all-stars was like oh yeah like we wanted we weren't sure about sales when it's like i, I mean it's mario i mean i know fire Emblem <laughs> is technically more niche but it's still big i mean especially after you know three houses in awakening it's still big i mean yeah but yeah it was weird but um i think yeah like fire emblem obviously like the first one was like super revolutionary and like it was the first of like uh it was the first like game to be like okay well, maybe not the first srpg ever that's kind of a lofty title mm -hmm. um but probably like the first like most recognizable one. i think i'm, I'm kind of talking on my ass here but like 
it was it was like the first with a bunch of like these crazy mechanics and like it was very exploratory and stuff and then Gaiden was just another of this crazy another crazy fire emblem adventure from Kaga um but I think if you were if you are able to play FE1 like I think I think you would I think you would enjoy just like the sheer jankiness of it because it is a wacky game like FE1 is so random sometimes um but yeah I think I think going, if you're like kind of feeling like I I want to go back and play other games like everyone is definitely one that you should give a try I think it I think with that perspective I it really is a shame that that anniversary title is gone because that was like one of the best ways to play that game because like emulations is like so good for fe1 especially the way the anniversary like translation first of all the translation was the thing like they re they literally localized the game and then it's like well now you can't play it anymore which kind of sucks yeah um, but awakening uh yeah awakening saved the series that is true that is super for sure <laughs> um who was your uh favorite character in awakening so my oh man my favorite character in awakening um that's uh, there's so many cool characters i i'm gonna have to say though i for for once in my life i actually think uh it, it's it's gotta be robin like i it, it's weird because most of the time i'm not really someone who gravitates towards like main protags literally like or mm. you know love another lesson who can be sort of a, a self insert but i just find robin i think robin's sort of different because like he's sort of an avatar but he has more of a personality to their yeah. character which i think is really fun where it's like yeah you can sort of self insert as robin but they are still very much your own person um and i don't know i like that i like that they're you know sort of a dorky uh you know, fun in them, but they they can be serious as well. And I just like the the aspect of like knowing, you know, everything going on with Grima w related to them is really interesting to me. Especially when like you replay the game with that sort of context. I think I don't know. It's so cool. I, it's some it's something something about how you as the you know protag and also have like this villainous counterpart to them. I think is really cool. Like I don't really think. Yeah, like that, that's kind of like the only time I can think of in this series that they've they they've really done something that was like the the protagonist character. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just really interesting. I, I yeah, I, I have to say like I know that's like the generic answer, but something on Robin like overall just really st just stuck with me when I played Awakening for sure. Yeah, I think I think what also makes like Robin like such a good character is that like I feel like he was already like or they were already like default like a really good character. But I feel like they've just gotten better, like, with age, especially since, like, main characters in Fire Emblem being, like, the avatar or, like, just becoming, like, the norm. Um, and, like, it's one of those things where, like, Robin set the standard for what an avatar could be, like, a character in the army. Um, they serve as, like, a support for, like, Krom. They don't have, like, a centralizing aspect to the plot until, like midway to like the end so it's still kind of mm -hmm. like Krom's story which is i really appreciate um and they're like they're a homie like the, their supports are good like you said they're dorky um and then i i feel like at least for me every time there's a new avatar i always i, I always i'm like how do you stack up to robin like and so when alir came out it's like how do you stack up like when byleth came out I, like the one of the first things i thought of with byleth was just like you're not Robin. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, 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 it sucked. Like, the one thing I did like that they, like, tried to do with Byleth was, like, them not really talking and them being more silent was kind of, like, in the lore where it's, like, characters are like, oh, they've always been like this. But yeah. what I kind of like, I like that contextualization. But, like, yeah, I just have never, I'm never a fan of, like, more silent pro tags. I always like when my protagonist is more of a personality or more of a character. And I will definitely say, like, I very much, I wasn't expecting it because, like, I wasn't a big fan of their design, but I very much ended up enjoying Alir a lot. Interesting. Because I really like the context of them being, of them being weirded out by everyone, like, being, like, such a, a dick rider for them. Like, wanting to, like, <laughs> meet our best friend. Like, oh, Divine Dragon, like, can I, can I, can I get you this? Can I get you? And they're like, I'm, can you leave me alone? Can you back up? Like, give me some space. I, I really like that. I thought that was fantastic. 
<laughs> That's funny. It is, it is, it, I mean, it would be disorienting to wake up from a thousand years sleep not knowing anything and then having right. all the homies be like obsessed with you. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I do, I do like, uh, I think you mentioned like Byleth being like kind of deliberately made to be like really silent. Um, and yeah, Alir being deliberately made to be very like what what's going on here is funny. It is definitely a it, def it definitely is a quality of Alir that I think is like relatable. Um, and if anything, like Alir can act somewhat relatable, which is nice. Um, but they are the main they are the main character. So and they are the avatar. So there is definitely like a relatability actually, that should be there. Yeah, I, it's funny because like I actually. You know what is a character that like I think is like super underrated as like a a, a insert protagonist like I did not think I'd like dude Chez was so good dude I, Chez was amazing Chez was incredible I and it also made me like a, like Violet a little bit more from that that yeah as well. yeah um, God dude a three I, I like it's crazy because after you know after the first Fire Emblem Warriors which is like such a huge letdown. Um, three helps. I like, I, you know, I went in like, okay, well, here we go again. And I played the demo and I just like, I, I three helps is so good. I, I think I had no right being that good. <laughs> Dude. Like it's so, I, okay. Like if warriors, like was like fire and warriors was a disappointment. Like as far as like, I guess the direction they took with the possibility of like a fire emblem, like universe crossover thing by only having like three or whatever, um but yeah they really like went crazy with warriors dude like or sorry uh three hopes like Ashes is a great character uh byleth actually gets to be a character which is like really nice because mm -hmm. before they were like yeah the silent protagonist with like um like they're written in the story to have like not many emotions their heart doesn't even beat like blah 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 but then, yeah, it, like it, it was really nice to see Byleth be like an actual character to and like have like kind of this social awkwardness to them and like this very quietness to them um, and being like this threatening presence throughout the entire story uh, was actually done pretty well, in my opinion. And Shaz's, Shaz's supports were so good and they were voiced so well and they were like a really solid main character. Uh, they were, and, and I love their, their their dichotomy with Arvel. Arvel was his. Arvel was, was the bomb. I was cracking up at Arvel, and <laughs> Shez is like back bickering is so good. <laughs> yeah, Arvel is like, oh, he's he's like, or I guess they're up there with like one of my favorite like Fodlin characters. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a shame that <laughs> like Three Hopes did so much to like unearth mysteries in Three Houses, but also like didn't like figure their own things out like i would really have liked it if like the things they set up like were actually like figured out i yeah i kind of hope they just yeah, I, yeah, I wish they had dlc you're right something. you're right because like there are some like loose ends in three hopes but it's really funny how many things it, it also wraps up from like three houses with like monica and yeah uh hilda's brother is there too or it's yeah. like you get to see a lot of these characters who are like mentioned or didn't get at nearly any time but like you get to actually see them now and yeah yeah i, I remember uh, i was like oh my god monica just being a full character in three hosts is so so cool <laughs> yeah i my i think one of my personal favorite like explorations they did was like the tragedy of dusker mm -hmm. where they literally yeah. were like they literally pretty much just like so, they like solved the mystery for us and it felt really good to like like having like rufus there and like being like a, like a big reason why it happened and stuff and cornelia and stuff like that and cornelia's like alias or not alias well real like cleobulus or whatever like their their her, her true identity being revealed mm -hmm. and stuff even though they we didn't get a like a a model for that it was still really cool um but yeah so okay if you were to rank main character or not main characters like avatars we have <laughs> okay we have chris no we have mark from fe7 because he counts yeah. <laughs> we have mark uh we have robin corin sorry i missed chris we have mark chris robin corin 
Byleth, Alir, Shez. That's okay. eight. Is that eight? Is there eight? There should be eight, right? Pretty sure. I think that's all there is. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think. I mean, I I definitely think for me, I think Robin Robin is like the tip top. Um, okay, Robin's number one. Yeah, absolutely. I just think, like I said, I think the the the, the lore of the character with the, like everything we know, Grima. I think how I think like you, you, there a lot of their um your supports conversation are just great too. Like I don't think there's like a single support I didn't enjoy with Robin as well. They just have mm -hmm. such a good personality, but they have that wiggle room to sort of let yourself sort of you know role play a little bit. Um, so definitely up there. Honestly, man, I'm thinking, but like. I, I I genuinely really like Alir. Um, I, the Alir's definitely up there. That's Alir number well. two. That's Alir like second. Yeah, I, I would say number two. Like okay, I'm, I'm, okay. Yeah, I I mean again, I I very much enjoy when they have their own personality. There's just so many funny. A lot of the support comments are just so funny with Alir. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I also like yeah, I, definitely just Alir just because I I just think they're really funny. Um, okay. Then, I so I'm not I'm not actually played Fire Emblem Three or or that remake, but I've heard good things about. Chris. Oh, Chris! Yeah, Chris yeah. is all like, yeah. If you don't, if you don't, if you haven't played a certain game, like you can just say I don't know, and like we can forego. Yeah, no, I don't that. know too much about Chris, but like I actually heard he's pretty cool. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Chris is a, Chris is a homie for sure. Chris is definitely a homie. Um, yeah, and then let's see. Mark. Mark is kind I'm of really... a mean pick. I mean, like, he... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's he like a... little snippets of him here or there. I I don't know. I, I is it like weird to say I probably put him like, I don't know. Um, you could put him at like seventh because like he's he's you like, and he doesn't have any dialogue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's I definitely guess, a mean pick. He's definitely a mean pick. Yeah, I guess I guess like he would be the last, but I would I guess I would put Violet or yeah I would put him last, and I guess I guess Corin above Mark. I mm -hmm. I am not very big on Corin. I I just feel like there's such yeah. I feel like there's such a nothing. It's weird. There's such like they're, they're like a nothing character, but also just almost feels like um. It's sort of like a, an Alir situation where like everybody is like constantly bending over backwards for them but mm -hmm. except alir is better because they're like weirded out about it whereas corn like just accepts <laughs> it. i don't know it, it's weird to think about but that's sort of where i'm at i mean yeah i i guess it also doesn't help that like i think one of the problems with corn and i guess by extension violet but i guess it's worse for corn is that it's it's because they try to balance corn like having being a character in Mam Dialogue, but the routes in Fates are so vastly different that it almost feels like they just can't really go in any one direction, so they don't feel like anything. Does that make sense? Like, with Byleth, I mean, I understand it's sort of similar, but at least with Byleth, they tried to play, like, the silent angle to where, like, I guess it makes sense that they wouldn't have as much as a, of a personality because of how different all the routes are in Three Houses, but they, like, I don't know. Because of that, I just feel like that's why Corrin to me feels a lot weaker as a as an avatar. I feel like um, when I think of Corrin, uh, I I I mean I haven't like had a really deep like look at Corrin in a really long time. Um, but one of the things that I do remember um especially in like conquest was um well i do feel like there were moments in conquest that like looking back i feel like them having to go through like that the helplessness of like dealing with uh the nor like nor's enforcement um i felt like that was that was like seeing a main character kind of go through that I think in hindsight uh, makes me like Corrin uh, more in Conquest. Um, and I feel like in Birthright, <laughs> I actually can't really say much about Birthright because I actually did not finish beating that game yet. <laughs> I got like pretty late into Birth. No, what happened was 
is I never played vanilla birthright. I played randomized birthright. And okay. then I, I didn't actually finish it. So I don't really remember what happens in birthright, but in revelation things were things were not great. Uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel like it's it's it's, it's sort of an inconsistency. It's like I, I definitely think of the three, I did enjoy Conquest the most. Um, followed by Birthright, and then Revolution was just bottom of the barrel right there. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, yeah. it was Re Reb hard was, to get Reb was unhinged. Game. I mean, not only from a story <laughs> perspective, but also from gameplay of just how units would join at certain chapters. Oh like, I think, my god. I, oh god, I think Odin, Owain, Owain, Odin joins at like chapter like 14, and he's like level 7 or something absurd. Yeah. It's like insane. Like, <laughs> Nick's Nixon Revelation was particularly egregious. Yes, like, Nick. Yeah, Nixon Odin. Odin, I think I remember joining like super late, and they're like they just weren't scaled, and it's like okay. <laughs> yeah, I I've never like I will never go to bat for Rev. <laughs> I just I will never go to bat for that game. Um, I I definitely feel like if I were to like take a serious look at Conquest story again, I feel like it has to be better than how I remember it. Like, um. I know I tore Conquest. I know, I mean, everyone tears up like Conquest and stuff, but I do, there has to be like some moments that you can take away from Corrin in, in Conquest that are, that are like worth kind of exploring. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as like my, like my top eight would go, um, I think I'll start from the bottom because I, I, I'm not sure who would be at my number one, but, um, even though I kind of gabbed about Robin for a bit, I think like Mark is the meme pick. So I'll just put Mark at seven. Um, I would, this would be, I don't want to say like, uh, I don't want to be like recency biased and say like a number, like a like Loki, like just my least favorite. But um, I would say, yeah, I would, I would put a as seven. Mm -hmm. Um, I would put Corin. Yeah, I, I can sort of get that. Like, I, I, again, I think, you know, Alir. Even though I wouldn't argue that they're like particularly one of the deeper characters, I think I just personally like enjoyed the dynamic of them with the rest of the cast a lot more. But like, yeah, that's, that's entirely that, dependent on how much you get out of Engage and how much you enjoy Engage's cast, you know. Yeah, it is true. It is dependent. Like how much, like how much, like do you enjoy Engage, like Alir's interactions with the characters, and like how, like how much do you enjoy how Alir like develops? Well, I don't think Alir develops at all in the story, but um, like it is. Yeah, it's kind of like that. That's why. Yeah, that's why I think they're just mm -hmm. my least favorite because like i'm not like i think the, i think their supports are like okay uh i just think alir in the story is like really like kind of a nothing character um yeah they're kind of stupid sometimes too <laughs> i won't lie <laughs> yeah imagine someone in chat american light in chat imagine rating the character you have as an emote for last <laughs> yeah 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 fair, fair. <laughs> um i think 3d glasses alir is just funny um so we have, yeah, I have Mark, Alir, Corin, Byleth, uh, Chris, that's five. Then we have, who's left? Robin, Shez, and, did I miscount someone? Did you not do, wait, you, Byleth, Shez, Oh wait, did I wait? Did I rank? Did I put Chez on my list? You didn't put Chez on your list. Oh man, you didn't okay, mention okay, Chez. Yeah. Getting. Um, <laughs> honestly, I I kind of want to put them uh above a leer. Like I genuinely, I genuinely, yeah, like, that's yeah, fair, I man. Put them above a leer, definitely. I I I love their attitude. I I I almost like wanted to play like that game multiple times. Like I don't, I've done like too many playthroughs, but like just the male and the female Chez are fantastic yeah um, yeah i like yeah their voices are yeah their voice yeah. their voices are fantastic yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I, I, I put them above a leer honestly i'm not gonna yeah, lie <laughs> that's hey that's fair who am i missing okay so we have okay i i thought i counted eight but maybe i only counted seven so i have okay uh mark chris mm -hmm. robin corin byleth alir 
Shez. Oh, maybe that is seven. Maybe I just miscounted and thought there was eight. Um, so I so I'm gonna have <laughs> I have to count off my hand here. So Mark into Alir, into Corin, into Byleth, into Chris, into Damn, I don't know who I like more between Robin and Shez. That's tough. Yeah, I mean, you know that, what? That's I, hard. I mean, they're both really fun characters. I I always just kind of give Robin more credit because I think Robin coming out when they did um, it just has a really good balance of yeah of being wise. sort of like again a more of the self insert but also just having your own personality. Um, I think they're really good because like I love Shez. I think you can do that with Shez too, but I definitely think Shez leans more into being their own character for the most part. Um, and I think Robin that's fair. has yeah, a that's really fair. nice balance between the two. Because I and I say that as somebody who like again I really don't care for silent like self insert. I mean not si like silent, but yeah. But I also I really don't care for like self insert. Like I'm not someone who like role plays as a, a character <laughs> when I really play game. That's why I kind of like having characters with set personality. But I also just like having sort of that wiggle room with Robin uh, uh, as well. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's a that's a good point. Robin is definitely more of a like kind of the you-ish character than Shez, who is pretty established. Uh, and, like, is less customizable. Um, but the... I, I, I think I'm gonna go with Robin, then Shez, and Shez being my favorite, because one of the things that I think um, Shez... Like, I guess one of, like, the things that the later fire emblem game like three houses and three hopes kind of explored more even though they didn't really go even though it was like the the it wasn't really terribly important were like the decisions that you can do to like speak with the characters so if you made certain choices like they would like boost their support points or they wouldn't boost them um uh which i think was just like a, a kind of natural development of like being the avatar like you get to like you have the dialogue tree and you get to say what you want um but also the thing that I really like with Shez is that um, when he made the, like when they make the dialogue choices, like they're not directly saying the thing that's in the dialogue box. They make it their own thing, which I think is pretty cool too. Right. Um, and it really made like picking those dialogue choices, even though they're like, like if you gain support points or lose support points based on like the, com like the choice, it like, the, the support like internally like the points gained or lost are, are very minuscule and kind of don't really matter um but i just think the fact that like they do try to have like meaning behind the choices and that the choices for shez and what they say is really cool um i think like it, it would be like the natural like progression of like what an avatar is and i and i like that i like that Shez feels more of like, like Robin, but like, mm, like further explored as like, the, the like an avatar in Fire Emblem in practice, I guess. Yeah, that. yeah, and I also think uh, the other benefit that uh, Shez has is is again everything with Arvel uh, is just I, I like that they have that sort of uh, another voice like personality that they can go back and forth mm -hmm. with, you know. Yeah. Um, for the most part, like I, I, I enjoy that a lot. I guess yeah. it's, I guess like, yeah, it's not quite like you know Robin and Crom's you know relationship, but it, it's, it's just fun to have like that sort of back and forth with with Arvel. So like, I, I definitely I'm, get that as well. I, I'm just now picturing like, what if like like Robin just had like a secret like mini Grima like annoying brat yeah, <laughs> like, in their in head. head. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. If, it, if there was like a, a, a voice in their head that was like Grima that was like telling them to do bad choice, like the devil on their shoulder, that would have yeah. actually been really interesting. Yeah. Or actually. just like kind of like bratty, but like sometimes has like good choice. But I mean that like that would, it wouldn't be Grima who did it, but it would be really funny because Grima is like full on, I'm not cool. I'm mean and I'm evil and stuff. Uh, but it'd be funny if like, yeah, to have, to see Robin have, I mean, I guess Robin, low key is like the arvel of crom <laughs> yeah yeah i guess uh i don't know it's 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 funny how how i guess that that's that for them but it would be it would be funny to see like how crom, how robin would interact with like a like a mini god spirit like living in their head and stuff like that um it is it, like thinking about that like having like byleth and sothis's dynamic end like really early 
kind of suck too. Um, because I, now that I think about it, like, I wonder how fun, how more fun or how more interesting Byleth would be uh, if they had, like, a kid, like, that in, like, if Sothis was not dead <laughs> in part two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I also, like, I, I, I think Sothis is, is, is funny, is, like, fun, but I didn't really get too much out of her character. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I think she's, like I said, she, she's kind of fun, but, um, I don't know. I, I kind of felt like more of, I don't know, like, a, a fee character, you know, from <laughs> Zelda, where it's just sort of like telling you what what hap what's happening, what to do. I don't know, but she, like, she could have been a cooler character. I don't know. It, it's hard. It's hard because, like, I just think Arvel has such a better dynamic with Shez than than Sothis does with Byleth for yeah. sure. I feel like that also is in part due to the fact that like Byleth doesn't say shit. Like he, yeah. Like, so like. like yeah. Shez, Shez and Arvel actually bounce off each other, whereas Sothis is pretty much just talking to a brick wall the entire time. Um, mm -hmm. And then Soth, like Sothis is like a like a bratty like like she's I don't know, I think she's funny I think I I really like Sothis, um, and I also really like her in uh, in Three Hopes too. Um, the direction they take they, they take with her when she overtakes Byleth as a vessel and like becomes like like a, has agency again i guess yeah and takes the agency away from violet i think that's also pretty cool um and it's just it, it makes it it, t it puts a twist on sothis that i don't think i mean no one was really expecting um and i think yeah and i i, I think that's also a really interesting way they 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 took violet to um damn violet gets a lot more value out of three hopes it's a good game. I know that, that's what's crazy. Like you wouldn't think that like the the Muso side game would like <laughs> do so much for for the base game, but it really does. And I think like even as like I I still love Three Houses, but like I, I think Three Houses made me like almost appreciate a, it a little bit more after the fact because it just built on so much of what Three Houses established, but like didn't go enough into you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, one sec. Uh... Um. Yes, absolutely. Uh, why don't we move on? Because we we started with the his your history of Fire Emblem, and then we just went on a like literally like seven Huge tangents. Tangent. No, that's fun. That's why I love doing stuff like. <laughs> yeah, this. that that's why shooting the shit is awesome. Yeah, because we we don't know what direction it's gonna take. Um, so yeah, let's move on to Echoes, uh, because that is your favorite game. Um, and my question is, why, why is it your favorite game? Man, I, 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 I truly think there's something just really special about this. Now, for full context, I have not played the original Gaiden. I did not. I, I didn't, like, even when, I, when this came out, like, I, I didn't really know Again, it's one of the older games I, that I have not touched, and I didn't really even know too much about it, but just, I wouldn't have not have, like, I think, number one, like, Echoes just, as a remake, like, again, I, I couldn't even, like, tell that this was, like, an older game. Like, maybe, like, based on some of the, the map design and, like, um, gameplay, like, I'd be like, okay, I could tell this was, like, based off an older game, but, like, yeah. I, if, if I didn't have that sensibility from playing other Fire Emblems, I just would not have known that, but... I just think it just has such a nice combination of of story and and gameplay and that I really look for. So like for I mean obviously the story and the characters, it I love the the that there's a split route but they sort of interact with each other in, in a <laughs> way and I think that's that's really cool because you know coming from someone who like you know I'd only played uh, you know Fates and you know later on with like Three Houses how like. All the the there are the two routes are they're all sort of like xenophobic where there are sort of like they, they are in their own sort of categories but it's really yeah. cool that there's a split in echoes and then you can like send stuff over to the other side and then it, it reconvenes at the end and I think that's so smart like that's so unique um, how it goes in and then back at like out um, and then 
the characters, yeah, I just, I really love Celica and Ohm's uh, relationship. I really think that the characters that, now, I mean, granted, I, they, they added these characters, but they, they added a lot. Um, like, Brakut is such a fantastic character. Um, I loved, I loved, um, I even liked Faye. I know Faye's like, I thought she was really funny, I, you know, psycho <laughs> character for Ohm. But I like having that character there when you have Celica on the other side. Um, yeah, I just, and then the gameplay, I really liked, um, the maps design. Like, I thought the maps were really cool. They were, they were definitely bigger, but they definitely made me think more about positioning than I had in other games, I felt. Interesting. Uh, there was a legitimate challenge to Echoes, definitely. Like, I definitely felt like I was thinking more about my, my choices. And... God, the, the the 3D dungeon stuff. I, I uh, yeah, that's the other thing. The, the I thought that was so cool to have like um that dungeon crawling mechanic in the game as well, which very felt very unique compared to the other Fire Emblem game I had played at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I God, I just enjoy it a lot. Um, the support conversations are, are great in that game as well. It's just the, like uh, just really special. And again, I think the art style is. The other one, Hidari. Hidari's Hidari, art Hidari is just. Slaps. Hidari oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish every Fire Emblem game could have Hidari's art. It's so insanely yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I feel like uh, when it comes to Hidari, I feel like to to bring back like an old game and remake it like that. The way Hidari like illustrates feels like it's this like Renaissancey type like aesthetic i don't know how to explain it it just feels like it's like it's not like super saturated it's not it doesn't feel like persona like in three houses or it doesn't feel like crazy like me, like me, mega like like saturated and like i guess i don't want to say bombastic but like it has, it's not like eye popping like it is in uh for uh for mika picasso in engage it just feels very like old school and like it, it, yeah, it's like it, to it lift almost, to... it almost feels like it, it feels very high fantasy you know it, it's very high fantasy um and i think it's it's the colors that make it feel like it's like from an old painting yeah um, that's what i'm yeah it feels yes. like an old yeah that's it that's the that's i think that's the angle that i'm going for um and it's interesting that you that you mentioned like you had to think with echoes because uh i re i recently started like I recently replayed parts of that game for some footage uh, and like it reminded me of how important like positioning actually was because terrain bonuses were on steroids mm -hmm. in, Ga in in Gaiden and in Echoes. Like if you yeah, stood no, on, a, if you stood remember, on a... like there's a lot of maps where like the, the reinforcement tile uh, like you want to really play around like in different terrains where like your accuracy goes down. Uh, it just felt like the maps, like the maps themselves, you had to really think more about your positioning. I just remembered that, that a lot. And um, God, I'm trying to remember at the top of my head. It's it's the the special attacks, like um, the combat arts. Yeah, the combat arts. I had I thought were really really cool and well executed in that game as well. Like, yeah, those were crazy cool. Like, yeah, especially for like, because combat arts were first introduced in Echoes, um, and it was just even like oh god like i feel like fire emblem when they introduce a new mechanic um sometimes it's like it's not really like it's like very raw i guess and then it gets mm -hmm. kind of tuned up in like other like other iterations like in future games where it's like they have this cool idea it might be super broken but then eventually they get it right so like for example like pair up in awakening literally broke the game but then pair up in fates was like way more nuanced and way more balanced and then pair up took another form in three houses with agitons and then um that was kind of like the progression of like that whole mechanic but with with combat arts from echoes like right out right out the gate uh those were sick like weapons were really unique they threw in like like a ton of like new weapons that like they had a yeah, forge, the whole like, forging thing as well yeah. um, was really cool. Like, it definitely felt like you could really do a lot on different characters based off the weapons that you were giving them, because you know the weapons themselves had like all those different skills and abilities attached to them. Yeah. So I kind of really like that. Um, even as someone who's like, 
Yeah, yeah. I, I just I thought that was really fantastically executed. And I like I kind of wish like I've been hoping for like that sort of mechanic to come back in another game for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it's also interesting how, in your case, when you just just to call back to Shadow Dragon, like you you obviously like you haven't played you never played FE one, and then you played Shadow Dragon, and like you hated the experience. It was not great. But then you've never played Gaiden, but then you play Echoes, and it's like holy shit, this game fucking rules. Um, I think that just goes to show like how good Echoes is at like appealing to like players who played Gaiden, like me, um, in the same way that people who played like the original FE1 would find FE11 like really, really cool. But then also having like the wow factor of just being like a, just a really, really good game for as like an entry point, uh, at least in my opinion. I know people don't really agree that Echoes could be a good entry point game because it's like it's still like pulling things off from like an old nes title but i think it's really cool how you were like damn this game actually is sick as fuck and i didn't have to yeah, yeah. Old, your it's original it's like i about the entry point thing is like i think the reason why it's my favorite is because i already had an appreciation for like you know i, I was a new you know new era like i had an appreciation for what fire Emblem was with like awakening and and, and, mm. and all that and i think like going into echoes because of that i felt like because I had knowledge of like how the game is played, um, you know, sort of the mechanics and everything, I think it, I had such an appreciation for Echoes because it just sort of built off of what I knew, but also just like did it in a way that felt like um, it was like the next step in like gameplay. Like I said, you know, it's more difficult. Uh, you know, I had to really like more think about my actions. And I felt like because it, it gave me more of like a, a challenge from that perspective. I like enjoyed it a lot more because I sort of understood what what made the games fun and what made them so enjoyable. So like yeah, I, I definitely would say like I, like I always tell people to really to, to definitely play Echoes, but like I usually tell people like it's definitely a game that you should play like after you've played a baseline Fire Emblem like where you ever like you've entered with like I don't know like if you start with Three Houses or Awakening or I you know, I usually tell people to even nowadays I tell people to play Awakening first if they want to get the Fire Emblem. <laughs> even nowadays, even after Three Houses and Engage, um, I still just tell people to like just play Awakening by any means possible. Um, but then definitely like Echoes is what really got me into like min-maxing and like Interesting. Uh, everything in Fire Emblem for sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's so cool because like Echoes, like now that I think about it, like Echoes had like the, the overworld exploration. They had like enemy like mobs that you can like enter in dungeons and like grind exp and stuff but you couldn't like but like growth rates were still like i'm pretty sure they were basically the same from gaiden uh where they were maybe they were a little higher i'm not i don't remember maybe someone in chat can correct me if i'm wrong here but um like grinding in echoes like when like there's less reward to grind in echoes because like the growth rates were so low Whereas when you grinded in Awakening, like there was a ton of reward because like growth rates were high, like they were mega high. So even like there is an incentive to grind in Echoes because you can do it. Um, but it's one of those things where like, do you really need to or can you just actually keep playing the game? Because like you don't you're not getting like a perfect level up uh every time or like a really really good level up every time mm -hmm. so like you can just keep playing the game and i think that's also like a really positive point uh for echoes too where it just kind of keeps you on like it keeps you like engaged <laughs> to keep playing it um here's a question for you though because this is a pretty dicey topic uh what do you think of act four's maps for celica the swamp and the swamp maps and stuff Cause this is a, oh cause... man okay so i do like from what i recall i do know it's like just it's just like a big open field and you can like not move that much and and you're just fighting hordes of of, of monsters <laughs> i definitely will say that like i i can definitely think at that time i i think it's probably one of the, like the the like slower more plotting parts that isn't as enjoyable but like even when i was playing it i at least was like engaging with the game's mechanics to where like i didn't think too much of it like i i definitely was like okay this isn't as cool as like the map where you fight the witches or yeah um or that sort of stuff but i definitely like didn't think off the top of my head i didn't think it was like really bad i mean i think it's just because that speaks to the presentation 
of the game and how much I enjoyed the game's mechanics to where like something like that I just didn't even have any issues with immediately off the top of my head. Like I just still remember playing that part and not really thinking like, okay, well this is like kind of dull, but I'm still enjoying my time with the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fair. Like that's a, that's, that's fair because like me personally, like I, I like am the worst person to like criticize echoes because like I am a soldier of echoes like for life. And I was a soldier for Gaiden for life. Like I will, I, I, I refuse to see things wrong with Echoes. I just I just decide I don't want to because it's like the perfect game. <laughs> I, I literally I do not perceive it. I, I do not perceive it as bad in any way, shape, or form. Like someone can criticize it, I'll be like, just be better. Like when 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 people like because when when Echoes came out, I was like so stoked to just play the game. Like I've never been like more excited to play a game in my life. And then like when part four when I got to part four, um I just like I just knew how to play those maps and like I was super invested in like pro stratting everything um that like any any possible like objective like objectively like not good design decision I just didn't care for I, I just like oh you're complaining about a chapter four just get good bro just literally get good that was my <laughs> answer I, I literally was like just get good um I I cannot perceive that game the only thing I will perceive negatively about Echoes is the DLC was absurdly priced, and that was dumb. It was more than the fucking base game. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't even think I bought any of the Echoes DLC. I'll be honest, I don't remember even playing any of that DLC, because I know back then, did it, I don't think they had like a season pass, I just remember it being expensive. Yeah, I, they just, they, I don't know, I think the season pass thing started, uh, with, I think that trend started with, with, uh, Three Hope, with Three Houses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the DLC was kind of not. Yeah, there was a lot. Gee, I, I'm looking at this. I didn't realize there was this many. Yeah, there was I mean, a lot. Cool. The only thing that's cool that I see here is is I didn't realize they put in the Cypher card game characters in. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, there, there, yeah, there was four of those. I, I like, I, I revisited my save file because I, I, I like ported my save file from, mm -hmm. uh, the through my 3ds to Citra like rest in peace but like um my like i don't even remember there like there's emma shade oh there there, there was a there, there was a season pass but it just says it, it basically just gave you a discount on it if you were gonna buy it you, it was cheaper to buy the season pr price 44 45 dollars <laughs> wait wait a no i'm, I'm dead i'm dead serious it was more expensive what? than the base you didn't know that I didn't realize it was that, you know, I, there's a reason I didn't play any of this. Oh my God. What the yeah, hell? You, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was literally, yeah. You, you were buying a second game, obviously of less value because the base game is the base game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, there was, it was Randall and Yuzu. I think those were the, those were the four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I barely used them. Cause like at that point in the game, like I was already like mega done the game. Like, like I, I progressed far past their level being usable. Right. Um, and also like the fact that three, the fact that like they added that they added act six with like Forneas and the Thabes Labyrinth and Grima's origins and stuff like that was so sick, dude. Like, yeah, they that was really cool. They, how they tied it in yeah, like they, that. Um, they didn't need to do that. They absolutely did not need to do that, but they did it anyway. Um, I was gonna say, in in terms of like characters, like obviously I I, I adore Celico with my heart, but can I talk, bro? May, I don't know. I, I, May's I, the I, bomb. I, I do not know okay. the context of what this character was like in in the original Gaiden. Holy she crap! Was like, she was like I a sporty, adore May girl. with all my. She is so good. <laughs> She's genuinely one of my favorite characters that I think that most people just adore, don't even like talk about. <laughs> May's May's amazing. May is great. That's another. Oh my god, that's another thing that I didn't even bring up. Like as one of my reasons is like the full voice acting. The the voice cast was crazy good. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely the best. Like, I, I I hesitate to see like the best vocal performance for a Fire Emblem game. Um, but like maybe actually yes. <laughs> it's up there. Like I, I remember being shocked that everything was fully voiced for a 3DS game. 
And uh, again, the vocal performances are, are so good. It just May and May and Bowie, uh, they're dynamic. Like, they're such so. fun characters. But I just May especially, I just love her personally. Big Hurdy Lightning. Uh, yeah, big Hurdy. Like I was literally about to say yes. that exact line. <laughs> I, I love her attitude. I love that she's like always gassing up Celica. I love that she's like, um, like very self righteous, but like. I don't know. She's so. I just. I enjoy that character a lot. That was such a fun character. She brings so much energy, and she's such a good balance between like like May, Bowie, Celica. Such a good trio of characters. Yeah. Um, and another character I think is super overlooked is Leon. I I really love Leon. I really think um, just his personality and how he reacts uh, with everyone in the party. But just I think like there's so much push to have more um, openness with you know with with um gay lgbt characters in fire Emblem. i just feel like leon just like gets left out of that conversation um he's just such a well done character you know he's very he's very yeah i i, I yeah he leon is probably like a top 10 echoes character for me um his supports with valbar and his 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 dynamic with valbar i've always i've always enjoyed even in gaiden i've always liked um and to flesh that out uh in echoes was 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 a treat um right he was so great yeah uh but that goes with so many like like you said like the cast is so strong um and it's it's really funny to think about because like they took a game an original game with like characters who had like one line of personality um and then they just like were able to like give all these characters like uh, a, a, literally a personality dialogue all this stuff um and even though their supports are pretty straightforward and some are honestly not not terribly great like some were kind of just like okay this is happening um some of them are really good like and the the, the main story writing of characters like mm -hmm. uh lucas and python Forsyth, Clive, uh, the dynamic between like, uh, like Clive and Fernand, the conflict they have, um, the Burkut really goofy... was Burkut was such a crazy. I, I like I can't believe Burkut wasn't in like it feels like a character should have just been there. Like I can't believe they're, they're they made Burkut for Echoes, right? I <laughs> yeah, he wasn't yeah he wasn't a thing. I'm yeah. not a, uh, yeah I'm not a terribly huge fan of like how. No, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I feel like... Uh, oh, sorry, Gohan, I, I kind of interrupted you there. No, I'm just, I, I just... Brakut and Renea's relationship, I just, like... God, dude, that is so tra... Like, th that tra... I mean, I think that's why I really enjoyed Brakut. It's just him and him and Renea's relationship just, like... Ugh, it hurt, <laughs> you know? Um, I, I wasn't expecting them to go with, like, that direction as well, but... Yeah, I, I really thought Brakut was a fantastic character that they added. Um, and then you were just saying, to, just to go back, like you're talking about some of the support conversations. One of my favorites is, um, I really like Sonya, and I really like her, uh, the only support she really has is with um, with Jenny. And I really like Jenny and Sonya's support because it's like a mother-daughter sort of thing. Where Jenny's like, oh, you remind me of, your mo of, my, of my mom. And I don't know, it was just so sweet. I, like, <laughs> I just loved a lot of the cute little support conversations like that, that really fleshed out a lot of these characters that, um, you know, like you said in Gaiden, some of them didn't really have that much going for them in the first place, so. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you're a big fan of Celica, but how, how, do you feel, how do you feel about Alm? Because I've always, like, okay, I lied. So I will soldier on for everything about Echoes, but I will... Like, I've never really been super big on how Alm was, like, fleshed out and characterized in Echoes. It's one of, like, the points of that I... I've, I've actually always wanted to kind of write about Alm in Echoes, like, as a character, um, and how, like, he was characterized differently in Gaiden and in Awakening as, like, as, like a... Um, I, I want to say Einherjar. Like he had, like he, he even had dialogue moments as an Einher. Well, they all had di dialogue moments as an Einherjar. Einherjar. I think I'm pronouncing that right. In Awakening, and then how he was kind of the direction they took Almond Echoes. Um, I think it's really interesting how 
there's like three it feels like there's like three alms but how do you feel about how alm kind of developed and was fleshed out in uh in echoes because Selka is best but what do you think of yeah Ulm? i i mean i think i enjoyed alm at the beginning and at the end but in the middle it's kind of like yeah i i kind of i not to say like i didn't enjoy seeing his character develop i definitely like i think there were moments where i was frustrated with his character um like i just remember like being at my 3ds like what are you doing dude like i definitely had moments of like that but i think like despite that i i, I definitely am someone who thinks that a character can be flawed and make mistakes um be, as long as like they are able to sort of learn something from it and so like i i think like probably one of the lower points like when he's having the, the schism like the argument but with celica i remember just being like oh, oh are we really doing this but like i i feel like just because of how things get resolved at the end like uh, again i think he does flounder a little bit but uh, you know, characters don't have to be perfect and and i think it really speaks volumes that when there's a character who can make a mistake or or do something that you don't agree with but you still end up enjoying them like i i think that's much more interesting the character is just like always perfect you know what i mean um and so yeah i do think i have some issues with alm towards the middle of the game but i think mm -hmm. ultimately with the conclusion and um how it the story ends with him and salika i think makes it, it it definitely lessens it you know what i mean yeah yeah um i yeah the thing the thing with with my kind of feeling with uh with alm is that i always felt that with gaiden alm he didn't say too too much but he always kind of had it, it felt like he had this like he was he had this kind of aggressive streak um mm -hmm. and that might be in part due to how like the original like translation or i guess like the translation like decided to write him out but he always kind of felt like like his go-getter personality was always retained even in echoes and stuff but he always kind of felt like uh, like a like a force of nature type thing um and then in awakening uh i'm just, i'm just gonna pull up like his awakening uh ein her yark quote because um i want to remember what he said specifically so i'm just gonna put uh because he has like a he has like a certain like dialogue exchange um i don't know how i could find this maybe if i go to his profile um there was an issue displaying this okay cool uh yeah i mean i don't like i don't really remember too much about like everything that happened with him and um with awakening stuff I, I, I have not touched the Awakening DLC in a very long time. <laughs> yeah, um, well, the, the reason why I, I bring up Alm as a, as a playable, like, playable DLC is because I remember him having, like, I, I, don't, I don't remember the exact quote, but he was very, like, gung-ho, and he was aggressive, and he was, like, bullheaded, and it, it felt like he was if like if Celica is meant to be like Mila and like this mm -hmm. benevolent like giving caring person and Alm is kind of meant to be like a Duma ish kind of like Regal not Duma Regal and being like a, like kind of this like uh, I don't want to say gruff but I've always pictured Alm to be like kind of a like kind of a more of like an Ike kind of personality honestly um and for yeah. him to be in, characterized in echoes as kind of just like he's just like uh for lack of a better term a generic like lord i just felt there was it wasn't the direction that i that i liked terribly because i feel like he i feel like he's more of a of like that regalian kind of personality and um he just wasn't really that in echoes and that would be that that's like my big my my big criticism is that i felt like comparing him to gaiden originally and then comparing him to like awakening alm 
Echo's Alm ended up just being not the not the kind of guy that I that I pictured. Um, yeah, I, I, it's it's funny because like you're coming from a perspective of like you know the the original title, and my perspective, you know, when I played Echoes was coming from other Fire Emblems that I had played, where like you know the main character, the main well, you know main main protag was sort of like you know an avatar insert. Um, so I think like that's why I kind of like I I I enjoyed Alm's sort of development in um in echoes compared to other games because again like at that point i'd only played games that had avatars um so it, it definitely felt like more interesting to me but like i definitely can see it like now having some played some of the older games like i can sort of see that maybe um you know i sort of brought them down to the status of like other lords for sure um but yeah i think again i have not replayed this game in a hot minute i definitely want yeah to, but like <laughs> I definitely think maybe if I go in with, with that sort of perspective again nowadays, I could sort of see that more, you know? Yeah. Um, I think I might have found... Uh... Yeah, so, for example, so in so he's... Like, Alm is featured in Lost Bloodlines 2 DLC. Mm -hmm. um, and, he, like, his before battle conversation... Uh, in fact, I might just uh, pull up a window here. That would actually be probably best. So just so like chat can see, mm -hmm. um, let me pull this up, and you you can kind of see what I mean by this. Uh, let me share. Oh my god, so many ads on F U on the wiki. It's <laughs> <laughs> always a, a handful. Uh, share. Um, Microsoft Edge. Uh, okay, cool. So um, Chris can kind of pull that up. So if we scroll down, um, uh, I'm just going to search for Alm. Yeah, so before battle, like enemy force has suddenly multiplied they must have summoned help from beyond our world. What do we do? Crush them, of course. Um, this is a battlefield. The, politi the politics of it no longer come into play. We're, we've driven the enemy into their castle doors, and now you have doubts. Let's buckle down and finish the fight. So the way the way he kind of talks is like kind of... Uh, I'm just trying to see if there's any other... A little more hot-headed, yeah. Yeah, he's like kind of a hot... like Yeah, hot-headed, like... Uh, like... A shame it like ha huh, quite the sense of humor a shame it will end with you like okay dude that 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 gives me ike energy like ike's like boss quotes in path of radiance were like so badass and i just feel like when i think of i guess that that's a kind of a good way for me to put it it's like i imagine alm before echoes to be like ike except if ike was more like of a social guy like that's kind of like where i actually picture alm before he was depicted mm -hmm. in echoes yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely would say, like, you know, I, I definitely, I, I can agree with, agree with what you're saying, because, like, I definitely didn't get that energy at all when I played. I, I didn't get that from Alm at all. Like, I, I felt like Alm was very, I mean, level-headed for the most part. I didn't, definitely didn't get that sort of, like, self-confidence, like, you know, energy, same like, Ike energy. Was, like, I, I definitely didn't get that from him. That's, like, not, like, why I enjoyed him as a character. So, like, and that's, like, what you're saying, like, you sort of envisioned him as, I definitely would agree with that because like that's definitely not what I saw when I played Echoes for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah, it's 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 one of those things because like Celica pretty much remained the same. Like Celica was just a lot more fleshed out, and they had to, uh, in, in terms of like the story structure of Gaiden, uh, like Gaiden's story was like really like not great, um, and the way they had to like salvage it and add on to it um obviously they couldn't they, they tried to like stick to like the story beats of gaiden and um a lot of the contention against celica is like her decisions to like trust jetta um and stuff like that where i kind of always thought that she just went with jetta uh because like she had to take caution but she didn't really have a choice but to do um yeah like, i mean she kind of Selic is very much someone who's putting always putting other people before herself so like when i played that like i definitely like could understand even i was like oh my god like come on but i, I sort of understood why she she did it in echoes 
yeah yeah i i've always like i've i i will i'm a soldier for selica i i'm a diehard like i will i will go to war for for her <laughs> <laughs> so i i think the uh, the way they worked around like guide and story beats i appreciated they made the most of it um and yeah like selica has always been like pretty much the same personality so it, it always has struck me as an interesting thing to think about of how it all really much shifted in personality and character uh because it feels like the only like parallel that's or not the only parallel but like a really significant parallel between all alms is that he's just like a a one-man army like he just shits mm -hmm. on everybody like he's just so jacked and so strong and like commanding an army and like all this stuff um yeah but i definitely it's really making me kind of wanted to 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 make a script about how alm how alma has evolved because that is actually really interesting to revisit that yeah i, I definitely would be interested because like again i do not know much context on the original um, the only thing I do know about the original is uh, comparing the, the the character designs with uh, like the Hadari designs versus the originals. Like it's so night and day. Like I, there is a big charm to the older Fire Emblem art for sure. Like it's very charming, but like yeah, it's just comparing it to Hadari's art. It's like it's insane. <laughs> yeah, um... I, I love when Hadari did. Was it was it a Choose Your Legends? for Celica where Hidari did like her Gaiden outfit, but with like his style, it was so sick. <laughs> yeah. Someone in chat, uh, mentioned that, um, he was raised in Mycin. He was raised by Mycin and Zofia. Him being aggressive as a Regellian makes no sense. Him being softened is just how Alm is. I think people over exaggerate just how aggressive he is. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's true. Like Mycin yeah. raised him. Uh, but I still think that like, you can be raised a certain way, but then like kind of have an aggressive streak. And obviously like, you don't want him to be like, like a warlord. Like, like if he's bloodthirsty. raised by my, you don't want to be bloodthirsty. Yeah, yeah. If he's like, if he's, if he's raised by Mycin, it's definitely, he's not definitely not being raised by uh, Rudolph, but um, I would have, I would have just liked it. If, if that dynamic between like his, like his, like that, uh, that aggressive streak in, in uh in awakening was more like more of a factor in his personality than what we got but yeah that's just me um uh yeah so let's look at the next question we have um okay so you, maybe you answered this uh but your favorite character and why so i think this is going to be kind of surprising. Um, and I, 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 there are a lot of picks that I could go with, but I think for the sake of, of being inter more interesting and also just a character that I don't see it talked about, uh, Zephiel, uh, honestly, man, I, I think Zephiel is a, such a cool character. And I love, like, I think the fact that you get to see Zephiel between two games sort of become the person he becomes makes him that much more interesting. I really like Zephiel. I like seeing mm. this, um, you know, him younger. I love seeing this younger character who was very idealistic, was a prodigy, could have been like, wanted to aspire to be a great leader. And then everything that the world threw at him, uh, like between Desmond and just uh, leading to him, wanting to just burn everything down. I think that's, I think that's crazy compelling for a villain, you know what I mean? And I just don't see Zephiel discussed in like that sort of context nowadays, you know? Yeah, it's it's hard though, because I mean like, because like the, yeah, I feel like, I feel like if FE6 were to be remade, we would really get to see like Zephiel, like, like that, what he became due to like, what FE6 like showed of, or what FE seven like ended up showing about Zephiel and how like Desmond, like you said, tried to try to kill him. He was really jealous. He did the, the Fox thing was like devastating. Um, all that stuff. So 
it, that's definitely an interesting answer. I wasn't ex- I wasn't expecting Zephiel. Yeah, because like I, I think like I think what really makes it made it stand out to me as well because like I I played obviously I played the, those games uh, like much later after I'd already like been on Awakening all that sort of that I sort of like that you saw the villain become who they were and I think that's really important because like again I have nothing wrong with like villains who are just evil because they're evil and like you know that that's fine like sometimes you just need a compelling evil force in a game or a story just to sort of move the plot along, sort of to put things into motion. Um, but I feel like in Fire Emblem, like, especially like a, a lot of the more recent games, I feel like you don't really get to see characters like Zephiel that often. Like it's usually just here are the bad guys. Whereas like, I think, you know, Zephiel had the, obviously the benefit of being elaborated on in a, like a, in another game. But I just like that you see the, why he sort of, does his actions and why he ends up the way he does. And I, I feel like, again, I, I, it's something I really like wish we could see more of in, in a lot of fire emblems, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. He really, he quite literally wanted to just see the world burn <laughs> like with literal dragons, <laughs> right? With literal dragons, Right. But like you see like, like, but he gets to that point because of, of how what happened to him in his childhood. And like, it makes a lot of sense, you know, how people who, come from uh, broken homes or broken situations like that um, and don't have anywhere to turn to would just be filled with spite and rage for the world around them, especially like, again, because like early on, Zephiel, you know, as a kid wanted to be sort of this uh, idealistic leader and be better than his father and and all that sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just felt like it's interesting to sort of see a, a villain have that sort of like compelling, you know, reasonable aspect to them. Where it's like, yeah, obviously, like you, you don't agree with them, but like you see, you can under, you can empathize with them. You know what I mean? And I, I, there are very few villains in Fire Emblem that I feel like I can actually like empathize with a little bit. You know? Yeah. Um, I, I think one of my favorite, uh, parts of, like, the difference is like his his like his art and like mm-hmm. his animation and his model like are so insanely sick like he goes oh, from the like this work boy... and animations and the gba games were next level for sure yeah, but like, like yeah his his presence i mean he's a sprite but like he has such insane presence to him even in, in a gba game you know what i mean yeah like he his 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 map sprite was monstrous um but yeah everything uh, he was just his animation was so like his scepter turns into like a sword and it's like damn xox is crazy dude uh oh god yeah i the thing is (laughs) the thing is is i i really like how he became i just feel like one of the reasons that I would hope when if FE6 ever gets remade is that they kind of retool Zephiel's like actual presence in uh FE6 because one of the one of the things that I'm not a huge fan of in FE6 is actually like uh Zephiel's like like the decisions he makes and his dynamic with Roy kind of not really even being a thing. Um and I feel like that hurts roy like hurts roy's personality a little bit um because like zephiel and roy don't really interact with each other um yeah no it definitely definitely feels like roy is kind of there to you know i definitely get it yeah i i I feel like they don't really have that much back and forth between the two of them at all um i yeah i definitely can, can see that for sure yeah so if there were if there were to be a remake i would i want to see like how how Roy and like how Zephiel would interact with each other. And like if if Zephiel were to be retooled to make decisions that are, are kind of like um it's one of those things where like Zephiel is like right there and he could like just solo the entire army, but then he leaves for Narcian to take care of things and Narcian fucks up. Or like he could solo everyone and like he he like trashes 
uh cecilia but then he also leaves it like the story kind of makes decisions like that where it, i kind of wish if they did remake fe6 that he would have like the circumstances at which he's on like he's present in the story is different so it kind of feels less like we're oh we're sure lucky that zephiel isn't here because he would just literally end the game right now yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's that's definitely something that I like to see. But also like the dynamic between Roy and Zephiel uh being being kind of fleshed out would be pretty cool too. But um damn, like his transformation was like one of the like one of like the creepiest like the things that really creeped me out, one of those things that were genuinely like creepy um in FE7 was like the ending where like He's sitting on the throne and his arms over like this. And then like the enigmatic man who is like Jan, like he walks over and like, uh, like there's dial, there's like the CG art of Zephiel, like sitting on the throne. And then the, he's like, who is like, who are you? And then I forget, I forget what Jan says. And then, uh, I think he says like, I think the dialogue is like dragon or something. And then like the CG changes from like him being frowning to like him smiling, like menacingly. That was like the creepiest thing ever. Like, cause I had no, I had no context as to like what FE6 even was at the time. And then it was just like this guy and it was like, damn, like now I have to play FE6. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I, I it, it's again, like I, I definitely would be be super down for our remake to sort of like they could build more of that and and um you know play into that more but like yeah it's definitely like it's a character you like when you when you experience him for the first time you're like like i want to know more about him and i mean you know luckily you know there is the you know they did elaborate on like his past but it'd be very cool if like if they did a remake where they could sort of tie them more together you know yeah 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 uh um, Another, another like unrelated, like related thing, but sort of unrelated is um, his art. I don't know if you've ever seen his art in Fire Emblem Heroes. It's, oh hell yeah! Uh, yeah, it's it's Akihiro Yamada. Uh, he does a few characters in, but like his art style is just so good for like for the characters that he does. But for Zephyr, it just it gives him that such. I I adore that art. It's such an interesting way to depict them. It's sort, of, but it's like it's perfect. It's sort of like again that that old old painting sort of aesthetic um yeah but he's so imposing it i, I definitely like that was like i think because i you know i did get into fire emblem heroes obviously when it came out i think like um when zephyr showed up and, and i saw the art like it definitely made me want to like go back and sort of like reevaluate that character because i just was so struck by that art yeah <laughs> that man he he definitely got the fire emblem heroes buff for sure <laughs> yes definitely definitely like the pop like he like Fe like zephyr definitely feels like he was like the fe6 version of like reinhardt becoming popular sometimes like oh yeah 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 because <laughs> reinhardt oh my goodness that's so funny that like a, a non-playable boss character this was such a huge meme for so long but that's that's always fun it's always like you know i have not touched heroes in a, in a few years just because um you know power creep and i was just, i don't have that much time to spend on mobile games i remember like Fire Emblem Heroes is at a point where like they added so many game modes and, and currencies and it's like all right I'm gonna do my dailies and Fire Emblem Heroes and I'd be playing a game for like an app like two hours and I'd be like I, I can't keep up with this but I very much enjoy my time with that game I do love like the sense of community and all the memes that came out of that game but it was fun it was fun definitely yeah yeah oh my god what a time like early early Faye was god that was a great was. game I, I I remember how how bust like how crazy Takumi was um like uh distant counter like uh, oh god dude it was it was a good time it really it was a lot of fun i i quite enjoyed early era of uh fire emblem yeah. heroes a lot Sim simpler times man simpler times <laughs> and now like i i still like, keep up with it because obviously i love the art and the designs yeah um and and nowadays like when i read skill descriptions it's like i'm reading a Yu-Gi-Oh card what's going on <laughs> yeah yeah it's always it's always yeah look looking at Looking at Fae trailers now, I only pretty much pay attention to the art. I don't even know what's going on in that game. Now they have like emblem characters becoming heroes now. It's like Ike and like Ike has like another alt. Like he has like nine alts in that game. Yeah, yeah. And and yeah, and like also like they have weird like reforma units or or whatever. Like it, it's like the same units are added again or like they're upgraded. I don't know. It, it's so hard to keep track of everything in that game nowadays, but 
I still, I mean, hey, we're still getting a lot of cool art out of it. I'm surprised it's been taking them so long to roll out engaged characters, though. I will it say, is, it, it feels is like they just slapped everybody from three houses in, into the game right away, and have engaged are like taking their time. Yeah, it's it's something that I, it's very curious because they are taking a while for engage to get characters out. Um, I've definitely thought about that too. It's very it's very strange how engage is just kind of like they're they're on the wait list and stuff. Um, and instead, we're getting alts of. Ike, like, <laughs> I, like the emblem character, like the, 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 the engaged yeah, character, exactly. yeah, the the engaged characters who are being released in Fey are just like the other characters that already exist. Like, <laughs> who was the first? It was I don't forget who the first engage Marth. Yeah, it was Marth, and like that whole mechanic came out, and I was like, this is, this is an, this is incredible. This is actually, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna check how many, how many. uh Engage units are in Fire Emblem Heroes. Yeah, or just how many Ike alts there are. Yeah. Fire Emblem Heroes. I'm just going to do... Wait, Ike, Fire Emblem Heroes. How many... Yeah, letter... there's a whole, like, just, like, dragon... Like, yeah, there's a whole engage mechanic now. It's really cool. But, like, again, that's just another layer of, like, I don't understand what is going on gameplay-wise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's... There's... There's young mercenary Ike. There his there he has his resplendent attire. Then he has his brave alt, his legendary alt, his uh, Valentine's Day alt. Then he has his fallen alt, his childhood like duo unit alt. Um, God, is there a way I could just see all the Ikes? I, I'm sure someone in chat can just like tell me like how many Ikes there are actually. Okay, I, I see. Here's with the same name. I think so there's Brave Ike, Base Ike, Fallen Ike, Emblem Ike, Legendary Ike, Valentine's Ike, and Young Ike. Is there more? I wonder who has the most alts in the game. Most alts? Maybe I would have to assume it's... It has to be Camilla or Camilla? Lynn. I, I, I honestly think it's Camilla at this point. <laughs> Let's see. There, there's a Fey gamer in chat who has to know this answer. Oh yeah, resplend, let's resplendent brave Ike too. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten Camillas. There's ten Camillas. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> That's Why did, I, 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 oh my god. Yeah. No, I, I, I kind of thought so. I kind of thought it would be. I kind of thought it'd be Camilla. She has to be up there. It's probably like her and. I don't even think Lucina has that many. Hold on. How many does Lucina have? Yeah, Lucina oh, doesn't even have that many. Yeah, someone mentioned the Corns. <laughs> like that's that's kind of cheating. <laughs> yeah, well, Corn. Okay, Corn definitely has. Yeah, Corn definitely probably. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Like okay, fifteen. But it's because there's male and female Corn. That's why. Yeah. What what website are you looking at to find this? I'm on the the Fire Emblem Heroes wiki. They they sort of they they oh, have I'm every on, like oh, individual I'm character that's, listed. That's why I'm. But yeah, for sure. Uh, was there another question? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. The, finish up with the question because there was something I wanted to discuss with you after we wrap these questions up. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, we're um the next. Uh oh. The hopes for the next Fire Emblem game. Uh, okay. So, I would say my hopes for the next one is I I want there to be sort of... I want there to be more of the nuanced characters that we had in Three Houses, but with a singular route like Awakening and Engage. Um, I, and I, I say that because, like, I think I very much enjoyed. I really liked the the gameplay of Engage. I think it's it's some it's probably some of my favorite in the series. Um, I liked that there was one route. I liked the map design. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the issue that I, that a lot of people have, even though it's not something that really affects me, is that a lot of people were just not as locked in with the plot and the characters. Which I mean, I understand it's an anniversary game, but like I definitely can see. Like I think the the most fun part of Three Houses was that characters were very nuanced or had different layers to them like and, and you know especially because you know there's the time skip element up to them as well but um because of that i just felt like i really like 
and I love the engages cast of characters. They're really fun. They're really fun, wacky characters, very colorful. But I definitely was missing sort of like the the more deeper layers uh, emotionally that I did with Three Houses. And mm. um, I would love to have sort of that level of depth of a lot of characters with um, a route that's just straightforward, like engage. Because like I do not want to have to play the same game four times to get the most out of everything you know what i yeah, mean yeah that's fair um, that's real that is a real yeah. statement and i i feel like that's that's like the, the perfect because like engage characters felt almost like fates level characters but just you know better writing but like again just very surface level sort of like somewhat tropey characters but i'd love to have that level of writing again um even or or even like um if you do like a split path again that interact with each other like you did it with Echoes and Gaiden. Um, I really, really love that. Because, like, gameplay-wise, I haven't felt like... game Besides map design, I haven't felt like the gameplay hasn't been hitting for me. Like, I can't think gameplay-wise of, of something that, like, oh, I really need this mechanic to be added, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think it's just more of presentation and and plot that I think could be sort of exas- uh, sort of built on, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a really... That's a really good. That would be a really good game. <laughs> like yeah, uh, yeah. Um, just because yeah, I because I, I have this debate all the time because I have a lot of my friends who just like did not click with engage at all and yeah and 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 I feel bad because like again like I I really I personally enjoyed engage far more than three houses but I can understand where they're coming from with like I just didn't jive with the the story or the characters as much which. Again, like, it didn't affect me because I understood what Engage was trying to do as an anniversary game. But, like, yeah, I definitely wish that there were more meat on some of the characters in Engage, for sure. Um, Because, you know, I had a friend, when every time I did this argument, I have a friend who was like, I only played one route in Heroes, and I enjoyed it a lot. And I was like, okay, but, like, the fact that you didn't engage, like, you didn't play the other routes is, like, you just ignored 75% of the game, and I think that <laughs> speaks a lot of, <laughs> I think it speaks a lot of, like, the issues that, like, Three that three Houses has. Um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah I, I just would love to have those, that level of characterization uh, again, but with just a, a more streamlined route. And, like, that's that's genuinely why I really loved Awakening, was, like, I felt like I got a lot of, out of the Awakening characters, in the, and I could just play my, the one route, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, replay value is definitely replay value is a really interesting thing to think about with three houses because like three houses had a lot of replay value um, in that you could play the game over and over again in different routes and there were I personally think there was a lot of variation in the academy arc between all three technically well yeah all three uh, the fourth route being like crimson flower slot or the fourth route being either silver snow or crimson flower well technically crimson flower because silver snow was actually made first um but i do think like the dynamic and the way things kind of work out uh are very unique enough to be like actually different and valuable in in white clouds which is the part one Mm -hmm. and then in part two like obviously the stories are different i think there's a lot of like story value that's different between Verdant Wind and Silver Snow, even though the beats are extremely similar. Um, but the gameplay is very samey. Like that's the big that's the big issue is that like the sandboxy gameplay repeats itself a lot, which is like you 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 replay three houses because you want to get all the content, but that the replay value of it, like it's 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 there's replay value there because you can there's more content to explore, but as far as like uh how unique the gameplay experience is between the roots there's not that much so like yeah it's entirely story driven is why you'd want to replay it over and over and that to me is like i do value plot but I, if it's not you know that if it doesn't feel compelling like, it just makes it feel sl- more of a slug than it has to be and yeah. i think that's just a general thing with three houses is i just didn't get much out of the map design overall no you know? yeah it, it's i mean i like it's hard to do that um like there's definitely there's it's definitely a point of critique for sure uh it was something that like i say this a lot is that even though i am abhorred by the story and writing of 
Fates. The gameplay, I think, is genuinely of Fates is some of the finest in the franchise. Uh, just the level of customization of over your units that you have um, with the friendship system and everything like that, uh, and the map design. Uh, I just think the map design is so good in, in, in Fates, especially with Conquest, but um, I know people meme, you know, people will meme about stuff like Mr. Fuga's Wild Ride and stuff, but like, <laughs> genuinely speaking, that's such a cool map idea, you know? Yeah. The con like, there, there's a lot of, like, ambitious goes at a conquest map can't really say the same for the other two um besides like revelation trying to yeah. be cool not really i mean execution was to be desired but um yeah so the thing is with like the replay value of like if you're if you're looking to replay like three houses for like its story and like its characters like just google it go on youtube like <laughs> um like new new game plus i think really super amazingly benefits three houses is replay value like if three houses didn't have new game plus wow that would suck to replay yeah no that would the new game plus definitely helps especially just like recruiting other characters and yeah. stuff like that from other houses but like absolutely the new game plus definitely helps a lot but it still isn't it still doesn't help that like again map design just the overall beginning of the game just feeling so repetitive just like definitely is to its detriment Whereas, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, it's like, again, I, I felt like I got everything out of Engage in one playthrough, even if it, if it wasn't on the same level of, of, of depth, you know, as Three Houses. But, like, if there's some way you could just bridge that gap and have the two elements of story combined, uh, again, very much like Awakening, I would love to have a return to that. Um, yeah. Or, yeah. again, like, if you want to do split routes again, I just think... Doing something like like Gaiden and Echoes is just so cool that you have these routes that are like going on simultaneously and they can interact with each other. I think is very very unique and that's part of the reason why I love Echoes so much as well. Yeah, there's there's a lot of um, ways that you can like increase the value of a game when it's over that Fire Emblem has done before. Um, in fact, I actually had uh, like my most recent or one of my, my second most recent video is what happens when a fire emblem game ends and it talks about like uh there's it talks about like the post game content and how that's developed over the course of the series and like my personal favorite like post game content um is like when you literally have uh like alternate modes so like hector hard mode serves as both a viewing the story from a different perspective but also it's the hardest mode in the game so like you you are rewarded with like experiencing the game differently but um like you have you unlock the hardest difficulty in a hector hard mode which is right. a really cool way to do it and and hector's perspective is really cool because hector's a cool character to begin with and then you get to it's not even just through his perspective it's new new chapters like new characters blah 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 uh another like really cool thing they did was like the post game content in like creature campaign and then like it, like weaving narrative in that with with chapter six of uh echoes was also really cool to make the game valuable when it's over um and then uh fates didn't really have post game content but what fates had was like insane gameplay depth where like you wanted to replay the game because there's like 50 ways you can play it like you could yeah you could, yeah. it's you just can, so yeah. cool that like like i said the level of customization you have over your units and face is just like unreal it's so sick <laughs> yeah you can you can oh my god there's so much depth to that game it's it's crazy and like the the fact that you can like really long term plan like a playthrough in fates was really cool um and like the gameplay was just so sick in conquest um yeah, there's Fates did so many cool gameplay things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I I'm I'm with you there for sure. I think uh, what would be cool is like, and now I'm thinking about how I said like you if they had the two routes, it'd be cool to see you know sort of like what if there's a Fire Emblem game where there's two routes, um, and one route is you're like the one country, the other route is like you're on the other country where it, I mean you know, maybe the villainous one or whatever. And like you, they have their own routes and then the ending point is that they fight each other and then maybe they have to go against a common enemy at, at like at the end. But it'd be cool if, like to see a dual narrative where it's like you see this side and the other side. Sort of like, imagine if like 
Birthright and Conquest like didn't have Corrin, or it's like they were just individual ones, and they would just like clash at the end or something like that. I got a I got a question for you. Okay. Have you ever played Radiant Dawn? Uh, no, I've not played. Um... Play that game. Okay. Okay. Play it. <laughs> Play that game. <laughs> Play Radiant Dawn. You will. You will. You. You will be satisfied. Well, yeah, I played. Yeah. I played the first Ike game a while ago, but I never. I didn't play the sequel yet. Yeah, play Radiant Dawn. Put that on your. Put that on your log. Okay. Your, on okay. your backlog. <laughs> I won't say anything else, but play that. Um, it, I know. I know about the um the, the beast race. Um, yeah. Is that is it? It's related to that. Uh, I mean, the Lagoos definitely have a a pretty important presence in. Well, in both games, but yeah, the, yeah, the, the Lagoos. Yeah, the thing with uh, with Radiant Dawn is that the the only thing I'll say is that everything you just said you wanted in the game happens in that game. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, one of my moderators says, "To be fair, guys, you haven't finished Radiant Dawn either," which is one of my uh, one of my Fire Emblem gamer sins is that I actually have not beaten Radiant Dawn myself, but. I know what happens and I know that's going to make you that like what happens in that game is really going to make you like it. Um, okay. So we're actually running out of time. Uh, cause we've been, we've actually been chatting for like over an hour and a half basically. I know. <laughs> uh, so what was, uh, what was the question that you had? Okay. Well, well, um, it's basically how you feel about, cause I get in this argument all the time with my friends. It's basically how you felt about, three houses and uh, versus engaged because oh, um, God. <laughs> in, like I don't want to pull that on you but like it's just because like I've always I, I just genuinely enjoyed my time with engaged so much like I said just for because I can we kind of already talked about it already with just from the story perspective of like uh, like I, I just enjoyed that I got everything out of engage in just the one playthrough um, even if it wasn't like necessarily on the level of depth of three houses. And so, like, I would much rather go back and replay Engage than, like, go back to Three Houses. You know what I mean? Um, like, just from a yeah. gameplay perspective. So, I guess, like, it's... Yeah. I mean, obviously, I guess we could turn it to, like, to you at least. Do you do you value... Obviously, you want to have a really good balance of both. But do you value... Are you someone who values the, the story more in, in a Fire Emblem game? Or do you value, like, the gameplay? Oh, damn. That's a... Okay. Uh, so... Do I value story more or gameplay? Well, like, my obviously, my, which is like you should have a good balance of both. But yeah, yeah, yeah. My my politically, my political, my politician answer is like I think a Fire Emblem game is at its best when it hits the trifecta of really good characters, like a really good story, and like really solid gameplay. And a lot of I feel like some games miss the mark on one of, on one of those things. And like I feel like for Three Houses, it had really it had a really solid story really really good characters but the gameplay uh like kind of just you you hit that enjoyment point but then it kind of just falls off and with engage it was like um insane fucking gameplay characters are super mid uh and then the story is bottom two for me um so the thing is when it comes when it, for me I would rather play. I value, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I value story and characters more than gameplay. I'm just gonna say it because it, it, it hits. It, it it's important for me in, in in multiple ways. Um, one is because I really love like deep dives in lore and stories and characters. It's like the the reason why I fuck with Fire Emblem so hard is because like. The characters are super sick. I've I've literally like part of my YouTube life has been because the Fire Emblem characters have a lot of depth and the stories are really fun to talk about. And like part of the staying power I think that Fire Emblem has to be talked about is because they have really compelling characters and um, and like compelling stories. Like Three Houses is like still hotly well I wouldn't say still hotly debated but like dude like that like Edelgard versus Dimitri shit that like sustained like fire yeah, emblems no, relevancy I, it, for it's years because yeah people because that's that's a that's a talking point that i get from some of my friends is that like three houses is still very much like discussed and in the public eye of people debating characters or discussing 
um, sort of elements of the plot. Whereas, like, it feels like in a lot of engaged discussion sort of fizzled out. Oh, yeah. Hell um, yeah. Hell but, yeah. <laughs> but to me, that's like, see, I'm someone who's like, well, that's just because there's the one route and there's nothing to argue. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, I just, I think, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with that because, um, there's, there's nothing like divisive about. I mean, I this is my opinion, obviously. I don't yeah, think there's yeah. anything worth talking about in deep detail, like about engages like story at the very least. No, it's, right, ca it's very characters. Much so, yeah. It's characters you can definitely like find depth in. Me, like I personally think, like if someone wanted to write like a dissertation on like Hortensia or Vale, they or absolutely Yunaka? could. Oh, dude, Yunaka's mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> yeah, like there's there's definitely characters who are like really, really, really well written and really strong and engaged, like for sure. But I think there's just not a lot of things to talk about when it comes to Engage's story uh, mm -hmm. because it sometimes feels like Engage, like it sometimes feels like Engage doesn't even take itself seriously. Like um, even though there's moments where it tries to be a serious story, there's other moments where it like it takes itself like not at all. And like sometimes it takes itself so seriously to the point where it's a like it's literally a joke. Like them trying to be serious is funny because it's like so not like Yeah, no, I mean <laughs> absolutely. I think I think I was on my knees like laughing when 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 Alir's mom dies in like two minutes i was like are <laughs> i was like okay man really like frame like i i, I thought that was hysterical i, I like I, I tried to play it off as like super serious and hardball i'm like dude we literally just got here you yeah. know what i mean i i personally didn't mind uh, like lumera's death too too much but there are other things that like come up later that are just like bro like what is this what are we doing like what are we doing here like what right. is what is literally happening and some moments took me out some moments they tried to like i feel like it's 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 tough to like i feel like the only things worth talking about about engage are like <laughs> criticizing it sometimes like so it's hard for me to be like it's hard for me to think about like positive things to talk about with the story because every time i feel like i want to talk about engage there's always like this negative connotation to it because like i can't help it and it's it's just a weird predicament i i feel like part of this like i do feel like part of the reason why engage really kind of like didn't i think one of the contributing factors i should say with between three houses and engage when it came to like its sustainability and like relevance is that like I think there's multiple reasons some that engage couldn't help uh or had like no like there's nothing engage could have done versus where three houses had really had really like lucky circumstances based on like the times we were in and stuff like that but i feel like one of the contributing factors to why i lost interest quick is because the things that i'm really passionate about where when it comes to like characters and story mm -hmm. they just weren't they just weren't there. I wasn't inspired to like look at the the world of Elios because there's fucking nothing about it. Like yeah, there's, there, the it's, world building it, is definitely like was was weak. I definitely get that as it's, well. It was it was the the origins, the characters. They're like they're some are really good. Most of them are like whatever. Like the, a lot of the characters in that game are retainers. A lot of the characters aren't even like enemy recruits except for like Linden. And it's like okay, bro. Like it, yeah, it's a lot of the things that I find value in and that like makes me want to write about like like scripts and videos on like engage just doesn't have and that's that's why i like dude like when you when when people talk about like genealogy and like thracia and like they're gabbing about the characters like they're not talking about the fucking chapter they're in like they're not talking about the mechanics heck half the time like they're talking about like the appeal of like sigurd and arvis and fucking like yeah, and, Julia and shit and Selif and like how cool right. they are as characters. It's like, we're not talking about chapter six, like, and what the map design looks like, because first of all, like that, no one gives a shit. Like <laughs> they're going to, they're going to, they're going to care right. when they're going to care when FE4 gets remade, but like, it's so much accessible and so much easier to talk about characters and story uh, when they're like, well, just there's so many ways you can access that kind of stuff. And there's only you can only get so far with discussing gameplay. Um, it's true, I, I, and I would agree with with a lot of those points. But I think like for me, 
the game could have some of the best story in the world, but, like, I feel like if, if I'm not enjoying my time playing the game, I'm just, like, not gonna feel like I want to slog through gameplay. Like, again, I think a good example is, like, okay, I, I know, I know Shadow Dragon, like, you know, it's FE1, and that's, like, not the most plot-heavy game, but, like, I, I feel like even if that game, like, I, I feel like even, like, that game does have some uh, story elements to it. Like, I just, like, didn't even want, want to bother getting through it because I just felt like I just wasn't enjoying my time playing the game. And, like, I am someone who, despite everything, I played all three routes of, of Fates. I played all three routes of Fates despite the, the, the plot just being mind-numbing and, and just, like, tilting me off the face of the earth with some of the support conversations and characters. But, like, I was just so locked in with the, the gameplay aspect that, like, I just wanted to, like, go to the next map. You know what I mean? Yeah. I yeah. think that's and that's that's of course that's a dichotomy of like you want to balance because you want to be you want the story to push you to game do more gameplay and you want the gameplay to push the story but like I'm sort of on the opposite end of the spectrum like I value like and now that I'm older especially I value writing way much more than I used to yeah um but that being said like again it, it just I, I I really respect gameplay more than story for the most part yeah um Unless, like, as long as the story isn't, like, frustratingly bad, like, I can put up with it, you know what I mean? Because, like, yeah. again, I just want to play a game that I feel like I'm compelled to continue playing yeah. and that respects my time, um, yeah. especially, you know? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, like, we're not watching a movie and we're not yeah. reading a book. We're playing exactly. a fucking video game. So, like, if the if the gameplay sucks and, like, or sorry, if the story sucks or, like, the story is lacking or the characters aren't there, but, like, you value playing a video game because you play video games and, like, that's what you bought. Like, you bought a video game. So, like, and the gameplay of Engage is literally so insane. Like, I, I said this uh, in, a, in, like, another episode was that, like, three, or Engage is literally so balanced you could reverse the recruitment of every character and reverse the order of every Engage ring you get, and you're still getting an extremely fun and balanced experience because, like, the game is literally just that well polished. And the mechanics are insane, and, like, the, the Engage mechanic is sick. Like, there's... It's, like, every chapter is, like, beautiful. Like, they're de deliberately designed to be, like, stick out with amazing like eye popping colors and stuff like that like if you value gameplay and you bought a game and you think the gameplay is really like sure dude like you literally bought a game to play yeah and, uh yeah like that's a totally re like i would even say like it's less reasonable to have my take be like um like I'm like, oh, you're buying it. You're, you're, you find value in the video game in the aspects that aren't the game itself. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's kind of like, just watch the YouTube videos about it then. Like, you right. know what I mean? Like, um, there, I think there's definitely like, yeah, your, your side is like way more <laughs> like real, to be honest. Like you're playing a video game to play it and have fun. And like, you find value in like playing the game itself. Like you're getting your money's worth, like more than I am. Like, so you're the, yeah. That's that's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I I enjoyed your perspective as well. Um, and then I'll just I'll just briefly do it because I know we're short on time. But you asked what my favorite um, FE memory is. Uh, yes, in, in the in the in the in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll say this really quick. Um, I I three houses was uh you know. Even if it's still not my favorite, it, it, it was a very important game for me um, because that's sort of where I felt like I really connected with a lot of the community. And uh, my favorite memory, I know this is going to sound like very, very self-righteous, but um, if, if you remember the video of, of Hilda and Marianne playing Uno, um, I I made that video of that fake support conversation where it's, it's you have Uno. You made and, that? Yes, I that made that That was you? Video. I made that video. I, I fuck off. Are you serious? That's like the funniest yeah, shit literally ever. I I had two of my friends who are voice actresses. I paid them with that script. I edited that video, um, and I posted that. And uh, the the community reception to that was so heartwarming that there was for years there was fan art of Fire Emblem characters playing Uno. Um, I was at a convention and <laughs> the fire the there was a Fire Emblem cosplay meetup. And they were playing Uno at the cosplay meetup at Magfest. Oh my um, God! And and how it sp spun off into uh, it just that moment to me just made me like 
really 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 happy i cannot and it believe really that just, was like, you dude you are such a meme lord oh my god uh yeah that that i just the you have uno were so fun. i just had so <laughs> much fun with that with that game with with just creating uh edits and shit posts and talking about that game with people um yeah, yeah so, your, your shit yeah, post no, game my is my favorite like... memory is just that sense of community that i i really got uh when uh during three houses for sure yeah oh man your your shit post game is like next level like that is <laughs> that is i didn't know that i didn't know that was you dude that was such a funny video oh my god wow damn that that honestly is a great memory because that is that was legendary yeah no i it just again like i i, I seeing it uh, get that popular to the point where people were doing their their fan art and uh of other characters doing it just like that just it, it warms my heart i feel like anytime i like Anytime something I do, whether it be a shit post or like a joke that inspires people to like do their own thing, I think like really means a lot to me because I just like, you know, I, I, I like making people laugh and like and like mm -hmm. seeing, you know, and pushing people to be creative and everything like that. So it, I had a, that was just, yeah, it, that, that meant a lot for me. I loved, I loved being um, around during Three Houses when it was released. And I will say like another fun thing about that period of time, unrelated, was like, the pen you could the, the discussion based on which route you did first because everyone's perspective was different based on which route they finished because at that time obviously no one had beaten all the routes yet so yeah. it was really fun seeing people being like oh i hate this character from blah 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 and then the other people like oh no this character is great because in this route and i thought that was a lot of fun too <laughs> yeah my my favorite memory is gaiden or echoes being remade and then that's it <laughs> like that's oh, just yeah, that was the, that was that was like the greatest moment of my life, pretty much. I, God, that was the greatest thing ever. Um, I mean, there's definitely more with that. Uh, that's just like my straight up super answer for sure. Oh man, wow. We've been, it must have been like, it must be like over one, and, um, like, I don't even know how long we've been chatting, but it's been a minute. Um, uh, so, um, some closing remarks. Uh, guys, first of all, thank you so much for sticking around and watching this episode. Um, if you want to support the podcast and support the channel, um, please consider becoming a retainer. Uh, that's our, our version of YouTube members. You get oh, access. So sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, you get access to channel emotes. Um, you get a member badge, and we do do a uh, Patreon exclusive uh, episode at the end of each one. Um, and yeah, just your support would be really great. Uh, you can also become a patron as well, and that gives you access to the Patreon Discord, where we're almost where we're kind of chilling in the Patreon Discord, and we gab and we talk about video games and stuff. Um, yeah, American Light being the homie, showing the emotes that we have so far. I'm, we're definitely planning to add more, but the thing is, to add more emotes, we need more members. Um, so if you are considering uh, becoming a member and you want to really help support, you can. Uh, I, I very much encourage you to do that. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, after this, we are doing a Patreon exclusive. Like uh, Ultima is not going to be here for it, but we're going to be doing some behind the scenes stuff. And uh, finally, Ultima, thank you so much for uh, being a part of today's episode. Um, all of Ultima's uh, links, his Twitter, his Twitch, and his YouTube are linked down below. Uh, and yeah, man, thank you so much for tuning in. I had such a fun time chatting. Yeah, no, absolutely. This is a very fun discussion. Um, I, I love nerding out about Fire Emblem, uh, and it's a, it's a fun time. I, I love getting different perspectives on, on different things. So, yeah, uh, thank you so much for having me. It was really a big honor, for sure. Oh, thanks, man. Well, yeah. Oh, hey, we got a... Yeah, we got a uh, American Light gifted a membership. There Let's we go. go. The Paris Elaine. Thank you, American Light. Woo! Let's get some happy Marths in chat. Awesome. All right. Well, guys, that will do it for us. Um, and yeah, so patrons and members will be uh, having some bonus content. But with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll be live next Thursday. Thank you so much. Deuces. <laughs>